The triceps play a prominent role in the appearance of your upper arm. The triceps is a three-headed muscle that generally has a greater growth potential than the two-headed bicep muscle. So if developing your arms is the goal, triceps training is key. But when it comes to triceps training, there are some commonly made mistakes that can slow down your progress. In today's video, I will show you four common triceps training mistakes and how to fix them. And I will also show you how you can make sure that you have balanced triceps training in your routine so you can go about training your triceps in an effective way. If you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe to the channel and leave me a thumbs up so that the good information can reach more people. And let's dive straight into the video by discussing triceps anatomy. As mentioned, the tricep is a three-headed muscle. You have the lateral, medial and long head of the triceps. All three heads of your triceps act to realize elbow extension. This happens when you extend your lower arm down towards your hips. So it's clear why exercises like skull crushers and triceps pushdown are popular triceps movement. These all isolate elbow extension. But anatomically, there's more to consider than just elbow extension for triceps training. The long or inner head of your triceps also crosses your shoulder joint. This means that the shoulder angle you maintain during triceps training affects how the long head of the triceps is trained. This brings us to training mistake number one, which is not using multiple shoulder angles whenever you train your triceps. If you focus on only pushdowns, you are missing out on the benefits of training the triceps at different muscle lengths. When you do tricep exercises with your arms at your side and slightly behind you, the long head of your triceps is more shortened. While when you do triceps exercises with your arms overhead, the long head is in a more lengthened position. So to train the triceps, and particularly the long head of the triceps effectively, we need to train it from multiple angles, and there are three main angles that we want to consider. We have overhead triceps movements, then triceps movements with the shoulder at about 90 degrees, and movements in which the arms are next to and slightly behind your body. If you incorporate these three triceps angles into your training, you make sure that the triceps get stimulated at different muscle lengths. Now, I also often get questions about how you can isolate the lateral and medial head of the triceps. Both of these heads only assist in elbow extension, so whenever you extend the elbow at any shoulder angle, the lateral and medial head will have to work hard too. But with that said, there are some things we can do to slightly emphasize the lateral or medial head of the triceps more. For instance, one EMG analysis found that doing pushdowns with a straight bar helps to better stimulate the lateral head, which is the side of your triceps. This likely is because the shoulder is slightly internally rotated when you do pushdowns with a straight bar, which better aligns the cables with the lateral head fibers. For slightly more medial head activation, the rope pushdown was found to be helpful. Now we have mistake number two, and that is about not using proper techniques specifically with cable triceps exercises. The only way we can get the full benefits of a triceps exercise is if the right form is maintained. Every time you isolate the triceps, or any other muscle for that matter, think about what is the limiting factor in that exercise. If another muscle fatigues first before your triceps, it's likely that your form is not isolating the triceps properly. A good example is what happens during triceps pushdowns. It's common for people to take on a lot of weight and start pressing the weight down like a dip instead of doing an actual pushdown. Pressing the weight down will incorporate your chest and shoulders to the lift, which is not the goal of the exercise. It's also common with pushdowns to let the elbows swing forward or use a limited range of motion. The objective with triceps exercises like the pushdown is to isolate elbow extension. So focus on keeping the elbows tight to the side and moving your lower arm completely down and up. Also lean forward slightly to prevent the hips from blocking your range of motion. Especially if you are new to triceps training, focusing more on strict form can be quite humbling. Because you need to use a lot less weight when you are strict with form versus being more loose with your form. But we are training the triceps, not the ego. So if decreasing the amount of weight you lift to improve your form helps you improve triceps development, then lowering the weight is a good trade-off to make. The third mistake is related to mistake number two, but now with free weights, and that is considering the resistance curve of barbell and dumbbell triceps exercises. When you do an exercise like skull crushers, range of motion is important. But we want to limit the range of motion to the part in which your triceps are actually under tension. For instance, if you allow the dumbbells to go too far forward with skull crushers, you have more range of motion but there is no resistance on the triceps here. The same goes for triceps kickbacks. If you bring the arms forward too far, you are taking away resistance from the triceps. So whenever you train the triceps with free weights, make sure you focus on the part of the range of motion in which the triceps are actually worked. With skull crushers, this means bringing the dumbbells all the way down, but then as you come up, not going beyond the point that the dumbbells are perpendicular to the floor. 
To give another example, with overhead dumbbell extensions, also don't let the arms move further away from your body on the way up. Keep training the triceps in their active range of motion. And as a quick side note, if you have cables available and you like doing triceps kickbacks, give cable triceps kickbacks a try. They have a better resistance curve and are really killer for the long head since the long head of your triceps is in a more shortened position. So far we have been speaking mostly about triceps isolation work, which is ironic because my fourth mistake is related to doing too much triceps isolation work. We know elbow extension is the main function of the triceps. Elbow extension of course also occurs with compound pushing exercises like the overhead press, bench press, bodyweight dips, push-ups and more. These compound movements form the bread and butter of your triceps training. If you want to focus more on triceps development, typically I wouldn't suggest adding a ton of isolation exercises extra, but first perhaps change one bench press variation in the week to something like a close grip bench press to more effectively focus on the triceps. And instead of doing a chest fly, you can try something like doing dips to place more emphasis on training the triceps while still training the chest. This is of course not to say that you don't need any isolation exercises, but for most people, if they have a good foundation of compound pushing exercises in their routine, not a lot of triceps isolation exercises are needed. A good rule of thumb is to have between 2 to 4 isolation triceps exercises per week. This is a starting point, the exact volume you should maintain depends on your past training experience and how you are progressing. As promised at the start of the video, let's also look into a practical training example that shows how you can train your triceps in a balanced way. And for this example, let's take a person that trains their upper body two times per week. As you can see, we have exercises that train the triceps at different angles. We also have several compact movements that form the foundation of your triceps training of which one exercise is the close grip bench press. If you currently train at home, you might have to be a bit more creative with your triceps exercise selection, but it definitely still is possible to train the triceps from different angles. For instance, you can use bodyweight triceps extensions, overhead bodyweight extensions, bench dips and close grip push-ups. If you have resistance bands, you can also do banded pushdowns. And that was all for today's video. I hope you now have a better idea of common triceps training mistakes and how you can avoid them. If you found this video helpful, then leave me a thumbs up. Also subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. And I will see you in the next video.